Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. And today I am going to show you how to bottle deer step by step. So stay tuned. I'm actually dropping a couple of uh, ideas on what I'm about to do in the next couple of videos as well. Step by step, bottled deer. All right, so here we go. Uh, first, we're gonna get our onions I cut up here. And another thing I should mention right here, as you can see, these mason jars, mine have already been sanitized. So make sure you sanitize your bottles and your lids on these mason jars. So what you wanna do with your uh, mason jars is just basically pour hot water in the bottles and on the lids. And uh, that's been working pretty good. I've been doing this for a few years, so it seems to work well. So all you really need is your jars, your meat, onions, pork fat and uh, salt. That is all super easy and absolutely delicious. Don't need that many onions, I think. For about 12 jars, I think about four onions. We're gonna start with anyway, but I'm pretty sure uh, that should be pretty much sufficient. And as far as the um, size of the onions, I just basically, uh, Kind of this size. There's no need to really worry about too much. I mean, realistically, if you wanted to, you could double or triple the size of these onions. It doesn't matter a whole lot. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised about how long it takes, because the longest part of this process is the boiling, which will take anywhere between three and four hours. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned in a previous video, I am from Newfoundland. And uh, the good thing about uh, bottling deer, moose, anything, uh, it basically stays good for years. Seriously, great. It's like fine wine. The longer it's in the jar, the better it's gonna taste. So now, as we call in Newfoundland, we'll get out our pork fat or scrunchions. Whoo! Gotta say, onions bother me. Better get them out from under my eyes or I'll be crying. And here you have pork fat. Cured pork fat. This is what you need to pick up, guys. So uh, that's what you need with your onions and salt and your deer meat. And also, again, with, um, with the pork fat, the cubes don't really matter a whole lot. I like to go, as you can see right here, I like to pretty much go to about this size for the pork fat. So you cut it all one direction. Then you turn it and cut it all in the other direction. You're making cubes again. That's what you're making. But like I said, let me show you right here. If you wanted to go cubes that size, like this size, that's perfectly fine. I just go a little smaller. One of the trickiest things, I'll show you here in a second. One of the trickiest, you should need to take your pork fat about halfway and just Hold on to it really tight. Whoa, this knife is super sharp. <laughs> Guys, I gotta say, this is the sharpest knife I've used, I think, in preparation for the deer meat. Ryobi grinder. I'll put a link right here for the Ryobi tools, but uh, it cut right through the, through the pork rind on the back. It's the first time yet. That is pretty amazing. Good job, Ryobi. So what you want to do right here, as you can see, you just want to leave the rind on the back here and uh, just cut it off of that. So sharper the knife, the better it is. But uh, yeah, I had to be more careful, I gotta say. Get down to your last little bit right here. I like to get it all. So you just go in, hold it down. You can pretty much get right down to nothing on this piece of uh, pork fat. Just get every little bit of it. 
There you go. Looks pretty much good there. And that is your pork fat. Good to go. And as you can see, the size of the cubes, doesn't matter if there's different sizes in there. It's all great. As you can see, we have our pork fat right here, our onions is right here, and I gotta say my mom, I'm 99% sure she uses a teaspoon for every jar in total, but I just use the uh, half a teaspoon because I'd prefer to add salt if necessary. So that's what I like to do. I like to put in a half a teaspoon because realistically this pork fat is also a bit salty. So you can do as you wish if you like really salty foods and go with the teaspoon, but a half teaspoon and play it safe, at least for your first time. And I gotta say in these uncertain times, these are so hard to come by. So once you're done, even if you give away a bottle of deer, tell them you want your bottles back. These are about, uh, these mason jars are about 10 or $12 a pack. So basically a dollar a bottle. So reuse your jars. If you give away a bottle of meat, make sure you ask for your jars back. I'm sure they wouldn't have a problem with that. But um, yeah, like I said, they're not, uh, they're not, uh, <sighs> they're actually about a dollar a bottle. So that's not, uh, too cheap so just make sure you uh, ask for your bottles back I'm sure they won't mind so let's get to cutting our deer here we go so first sizing what I'd like to do for the bottling you see it right here that's about the size that I'm gonna make these chunks some might be a little bigger a little smaller but that's basically what you got here so uh, there we go So what I'll do is cut a good portion of the meat and then I'll start to bottle some. And also in a moment here, what I'm gonna get started at is get the uh, water boiling. Folks, as you can see right here, this is clearly a little something that I missed, but with the uh, membrane here, make sure you get rid of that and any excess fat might be a good idea to get rid of as well. Stay tuned though. <laughs> You're watching this right now, but uh, he's gonna skin a deer in an upcoming video for sure. Pretty excited about that. Seen it done several times, doesn't look that hard. So, I'll be doing that as well. So as you can see right here, beauty. So everyone, here we are. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to bottle your own meat. So I'm gonna start out, like I said, I'm gonna start out with a half teaspoon of salt. That's the only salt. I always put it on the bottom because it's boiling and boiling and it's bound to go through all the meat. And then you're gonna put about, now you can do with the pork fat here, you can put a couple pieces every layer. I usually put in probably about five pieces per jar. And onions, can never add too many onions. So a few pieces of onions, just pick out about 10 pieces is what I just put in there. And then we go back to the pork fat, onions, more meat. Probably about six, push it down. Piece of pork fat more onions and probably about five or six more pieces of meat depending on the size that you cut it of course and stuff it in because if you don't stuff it in if i just left it like this without putting in about four or five more pieces by the time it's done cooking your bottle is going to be three quarters so i'd like to stuff the meat all the way in press it all down and then 
another piece of meat, more onions, pork fat, a couple more onions. There you have it. Now, with the jars here is put them good and snug because you need these you need these to pop and seal properly. They need to be sealed after your three, between three and four hours of boiling. So I always put them on good and snug. And then after that, after they're done boiling, I'll just give them another little uh, good and tight, make sure it's sealed really well. So that's super important. So make sure you put it on uh, fairly tight, not crazy tight. You don't need your, uh, significant other to tighten these just put it on pretty tight and if you need you can also take a you can just take a cloth there i just got a little more out of it because my hands were a little wet but there you go get a little tighten after it's off the stove tighten it up again mmm delicious so right now guys i'm just uh prepping all the jars here Salt in every one, so I'm done with the salt. Then I'm gonna add a piece or two of pork fat in each jar. Doesn't need to take long, I like to get it done quick. it right here I have seven jars I need folks for this normally what I do is put the jars in the roaster and this roaster holds ten jars so that's my goal right now is to finish off about three more jars and get this one boiling for the day all right so here we go as you can see I have ten jars right here for my roaster back here one thing I should well as you noticed I haven't put any water in these. There is absolutely no need for water. I've been doing it for years. You don't put water in your jars. Make sure you don't do that. Just trust me on that one. Guys, I gotta tell you one thing. Make sure your water is hot when you're adding water to your pot for your bottles. Do not add cold water because you will crack your bottles. It's happened to me before. Make sure it's hot water. So as you can see right here, I have the 10 mason jars right here and recycle your bottles. This was an old Kalamatra olive bottle and uh, even the lids with the mason jars, they're a two piece lid, this works. Done it a hundred times, this works. So what I've done with this one, a little different, I threw in all the leftover onions and I added a half a teaspoon of garlic on top. Another thing I should mention, what's amazing is the gravy that you can make from this uh, preserving your meat. Amazing. I'm excited for this one. It's got a hint of garlic. It's gonna be delicious. All right guys, as you can see right here as well, I've kept the box because I didn't realize this till a while after preserving. This box is great for storing them in. After they're boiled and you take them out and they're dried off and they're sealed and all that good stuff, it's good for storing them. And leave a little space, folks. Don't put them directly touching each other because they will rattle a little bit, not much, but uh, just keep them apart just a pinch. And as you can see right now, the water is uh, the water level. You should keep it right about there. A little less is not, uh, not bad, but make sure that you keep uh, topping up that water with hot water. All right, so uh, as you can see, we've got the 10 bottles here boiling in the roaster, and it is getting hot in here with that boiling. That's gonna go for about three and a half, about three and a half to four hours. And also this, uh, the one that I put the garlic in, I got it in a separate pot right here. As you can see, it's not fitting in this pot. Yeah, keep that kettle boiled. Make sure you got hot water to pour in there for sure. Right behind me, you can see the uh, 
deer boiling and with the magic of video I'll see you in about three and a half to four hours. Puppies and treat, 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 treat. Easy. There you go. There's Charlie's. London likes the treats. There's one of my newest subscribers, Dr. Mark, says he loves to see the puppies. So I figured just bottling today, we figure we give the puppies a treat. They love this. They just get a little taste. And Lily, get a taste of the deer. Deer for the puppies. Pillow, go. Good puppies. Hey, pillow. what we've got here we've got a duck this is gonna be my lunch for today so stay tuned uh, one of my next upcoming videos is going to be duck a la range so uh, and also today I think we're going to take a run out around and see if we can find another but this video will be coming click the notifications after that for a cold wintry day before the duck goes in I'm going to give you my secret recipe for the best tasting homemade bread recipe you'll ever, ever try anywhere. There's a secret ingredient that's coming as well. Oh, can't do that. It's smoking. There you have it, homemade bread. All right, so as you can see behind me, the stove is now off. So what we're gonna do now is take the bottles of the deer meat and we're just gonna take them out, out of the water. Great. Don't make that mistake. All right, as we were. I'm gonna take them out of the water. You can dry them off, you don't really need to, but uh, over the evening, what's gonna happen is you're gonna hear them pop. Whoa, the pressure is intense. Check out this lid right here. That's definitely gonna seal over time. So, uh, once they cool down just a little bit, I'm gonna take uh, a dishcloth and tighten them up a little more and put it on as tight as, as tight as I can get it on there. So there you have it. As you can see in the jars here, check out the gravy. That is amazing, you've got to try it. And basically all you really need to do, you can go to any place and buy these single jars if you like. Watch for meat on sale, pork, beef, anything, and just give it a try. So uh, I encourage you to give it a try and let me know in the comments and or if you have any questions, write a comment and I'll gladly uh, reply to your comment about bottling deer. Another thing is when the power is out, this is a great option. If the power is out, no electricity, you still got cooked meat. But with the season approaching us, Christmas, what more awesome gift could you give a loved one than a bottle of cooked meat? Great gift idea as well for Christmas. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell button for future notifications and uh, hit the like. I'd appreciate that as well. So that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.